his uh, senior uh, um, students and everybody should be a part of this uh, you know, problem because it's a global problem. So um, me, uh, alongside uh, uh, my other uh, uh, co-author, unfortunately she would not make it due to some personal reasons, so I'm, I'm presenting on her behalf. So we tried to uh, come up with some generic idea. You may, you may not see in my presentation some kind of, uh, you know, too many technical terms and, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, too uh, many quantitative uh, figures and facts. So we tried to look at from the different perspectives, particularly from the financial perspective. Because even though we have different goals, the ultimate goal is what is the return on investment? What is the benefit if I am contributing to the minimization of the problem? Will I get some incentives from the government? Or will the image and reputation of my business will be enhanced in the global market? What is, is going to be, to be in return if I'm contributing to the minimization of the problem? The presenters in the morning talked about the different perspectives from the legal perspectives, compliance requirements, or ticking the boxes. So, in order to combat this uh, problem of climate change, the perspective is very, very important. What is the perspective of why we are taking this problem as a serious problem? And the solution depends on the perception. If we are able to perceive the problem in the right way, that's where we could come up with a right solution. But again, the perceptions vary depending on different stakeholders. Different stakeholders have different perspectives how they see the climate change. For example, if you're talking about uh, compliance, right? So organizations that comply with the environmental laws, they get the backing up from the government. They get incentives from the government. Therefore, they're inclined to invest billions of investments into uh, uh, tackling with the climate change because that's how they get the backing up from the government, right? And when we talk about from the shareholders' perspective, so if the companies are setting aside millions of budget for the, uh, the climate change, obviously it is going to have an impact on their return. So obviously the, the senior management will have to, to face the shareholders, how they're going to convince them that by setting aside millions of budgets for the climate change, how it is going to earn in turn a better return for them. So unless and until they show a long-term gain to the shareholders, the shareholders will question the senior management, and they have to face a tough time with the shareholders. So that's why uh, we try to make an attempt looking at from the financial perspective. So if you could go to the next one, please. So these are some of the, the keywords of our, uh, um, the, the potential risks with the climate change, particularly in terms of the, the financial risks that businesses are going to face, and what is the impact. If you go to the next slide, please. Right. So we try to find out what is the relationship between the climate change and its impact on the financial uh, impacts for the business organizations in terms of the return as well as their profitability. Now, if you can just go to the next one, please. So there are so many uh, studies which have been, been conducted, but particularly when it comes to the relationship between the climate change and how it is going to have an impact on the, the profitability as well as the, the, the various risks that organizations do face due to the changing climate is what we try to make an attempt to, to study from uh, the financial perspective. Okay, go to the next one. So these are some of the objectives of our uh, study where the, our hypothesis is climate change has financial impacts on businesses. That is our hypothesis where uh, there is a both indirect as well as a direct impact uh, on the businesses. Uh, and that's where we, our hypothesis is that there is a correlation between the climate change and the impact on the financial, uh, 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 financial performance of the business organizations. So where we try to look at what is the direct and indirect financial repercussions of climate change, and then we have looked at uh, what are the opportunities for businesses, because businesses should not see climate change as a problem. They have to see it as an opportunity where they can come up with different strategies and how they can achieve uh, the, the financial performance by satisfying the, the compliance requirements as well as getting the backing up of the, the stakeholders. So it should be viewed as an opportunity rather than as a problem. Like some, uh, some of the speakers mentioned in the morning that when most of the, the, the people perceived uh, COVID as a negative thing that it has impacted uh, billions
millions of people all over the world. But it has also taught us some good things as to how to uh, have a quality of family life. Because when people started working from home, they were able to balance between the family life as well as the, the, uh, the, the um, official uh, duties and they were able to balance. It means how to be systematic, time management, and such some of the things which really has been, has been talked by the, by the COVID. So in the same way, so when we are looking at the impacts of the climate change, so it should be looked at as an opportunity rather than as a big problem. Even though 25 years ago, um, it was just like a, a, a prediction. Climate change was perceived, uh, it was predicted. But today it's no more a prediction. It is happening and it will continue to happen. So early realization is better than late twenties. what is being said in uh, English. So if you open our eyes now, and what we are doing today, we may not see the fruits today by us, but our generations of the future will see the fruits of what the sacrifices that we make today by uh, contributing to the minimization of the, the impact, the negative impacts of the climate change. So if you can just go to the... Right, so pretty much our uh, research was based on uh, the critical view of the existing literature. So based on that, we were able to come up with some overview of what is the seriousness of this problem and what should be done. So that's where uh, we also use some of the, the, the popular companies case studies such as Coca-Cola, IKEA, Amazon, etc. So if you can go to the next one. So if we just have a look at the direct financial impacts is increased operational costs due to extreme weather events. So when extreme weather events are there, like for example, those countries which are severely cold countries, right? Offices have to be uh, insulated with uh, heaters, so which can increase the utility bills for the companies. And those countries where the, the climate is becoming very, very hot, they have to use the air conditioned machines, right? Which will consume uh, the energy, so which will increase the, the utility bills for the organizations, so that can in, that will increase the operations cost. So that's one of the direct impacts that uh, the changes in the weather could, could have on the businesses. And also the physical asset damage and losses. For example, hurricanes, earthquakes can damage the infrastructure. So when infrastructure is damaged, restoring the infrastructure involves huge capital cost. So let us not forget, when, when organizations are incurring the cost, so where are they recovering from? They're recovering from us, right? They're charging to the customers, right? So that's where it is very important that the focus should be on how to minimize the cost, how to tackle the negative impact of the climate change with the robust systems, policies, and procedures. But mind you, it should be a consolidated and coordinated effort of the different stakeholders. Tackling with climate change is not an individual's uh, uh, task. It has to get coordinated and, and combined effort. When I use the word coordinated and combined, individuals, communities, organizations, governments have to come together and view because I myself believe that a global problem is not a global problem. A global problem is a local problem because we are a part of the globalization. Since we are a part of the globalization, any global problem is also should be viewed as a local problem because it would have its impact on uh, the, the business organizations operating locally. So if you look at the another direct impact is insurance premium. When there is a, a, an impact to the physical assets, right? And also when there is a, going to be a financial impact, obviously business organizations have to secure themselves so which would incur huge insurance costs for them. Like as we know that, prior to the pandemic, not many people, sorry. Yeah. So prior to the, the pandemic, not many people uh, realized the importance of the insurance premium. But this is also another positive aspect of the COVID, which has taught for the people that you've got to be resilient, right? So far you have been relaxing. You're thinking that nothing is going to happen to me, right? But it's not, it's not anymore. So in the same way, since the climate change is causing uh, you know, huge damage to the physical assets, it is very paramount importance for organizations to secure their properties, their infrastructure, as well as their resources. So that is what is going to incur huge financial cost for them. So if you look at the indirect financial impacts, like regulatory risks, the non-compliance 
of the regulations by the government would involve in huge legal penalties or in case if it is a serious offense, if it is a serious breach, it could even involve the uh, revocation of the license for the organizations. So therefore, um, organizations have to ensure that they comply with the regulatory uh, uh, requirements of the, the governments, uh, such as the environmental authorities, uh, so on and so forth. And another one is, people talked about already so much about supply chain, supply chain disruptions, uh, resulting in uh, again a financial loss due to uh, a delay in the delivery of the goods or damage, so on and so forth. And then, obviously, if uh, an organization has been in the news for its breaching of the environmental regulations, so it, its image and reputation would damage because it is in the media. The media is very well developed. Nothing can be hidden. So that's why it is very, very important that organizations have to ensure that they comply with the requirements of the regulatory authorities at the same time also perceive this uh, uh, climate change as not only just for enhancing the profit but also what is their social responsibility to the society because society is giving resources to the businesses so what in turn the business is giving back to the society also does matter right so then what are the initiatives taken by some of the, the well-known organizations we try to look at IKEA not only decreases food uh, uh, carbon food Print by installing solar panels on the roofs, investing in green farms, and that has resulted in a massive, uh, impressive financial gain. So initial cost will be high, but the gains will be uh, achieved in the long term. So, and also in response to water scarcity problems, especially those that occur in areas vulnerable to climate driven water, Coca Cola introduced a complete water stewardship program. But mind, why are they doing it? Because they're expecting more financial gains because they want to show to the whole world, look, we are socially responsible and we understand the, the, the uh, replications to the society, we care for you. But again, with my own experience also, how far uh, it is realistic or is it a tick box process is, 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 is still questionable, right? It's still questionable. So companies will be reporting in their environmental reporting multi billions which they have set aside in order for uh, them to tackle with the, the climate change and all. But what is the real picture that we still need to be debated? So there has been a, a tremendous progress in the last uh, five years, but a lot needs to be done. It's not enough. It's not enough because the problem is much bigger than what has been done so far. Right? Again. Similarly, Tesla also has uh, used certain other initiatives. And then, uh, if you can go to the, the conclusion, please. Right, so as we have uh, under threat understood what are the impact, direct and indirect connection, uh, highlight the need for businesses to respond and perhaps even bring more innovation into their uh, uh, climate change initiatives, how they can uh, minimize. So that's where the innovation comes from with the collaboration and coordinated effort by the individuals, communities, and as well as the governments. And also, as I mentioned, climate change is a global problem, but it is also a local problem because we are part of the, the global village. And although climate change is a significant problem, it is also a unique opportunity for effective and environmental friendly initiatives in order to reduce negative financial impact. So, unless and until we have a problem, we don't know what we are good at. So I would believe that we should always think of expecting problems. If you don't expect the problems, we don't know what we are good at. So that's where the, uh, the positive uh, side of the, the, I'll finish it just for a minute. The positive impact of the, the, the positive note of the climate change is, it is forcing us to be more and more innovative so that we can see how we can excel and use the resources. Earlier, the presenter has mentioned about the electric vehicles. I remember of France, a few years ago, when they tested the pollution levels. The pollution levels were so toxic, the French government has decided uh, to offer two days free public transport for the people so that you know they don't use their own vehicle. And people have utilized that. And two days they were traveling for free, and then after that, the pollution was drastically reduced. But again, 
because those countries like the Scandinavian countries, because I've traveled to five different countries, so I've seen. The problem is that uh, for us, we have a population, more population than the resources. But those small countries, they have more resources than the population. So they can do anything. But there is, there is tremendous progress happening in India, but it will take its time because of uh, the, the population that we have. So a lot needs to be done. All right? And then the results show that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Any questions, I'm happy to answer.